Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about paint removers. We'd like to thank Todd Toomer for liking and sharing our podcast. So if you're looking to remove paint or varnish from furniture or wood, antiques, there's a, a nice selection of products that you can get. And in many cases, it makes it much safer than using like a heat gun or a torch or sanding. A torch? A tor- sure. Yeah, you get a torch and you bubble up the paint and scrape it off. No. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of dangerous. Is that what they did in ancient <laughs> Egypt? <laughs> That's what I did in my ancient uh, <laughs> remodeling days. <laughs> The EPA says that half of the homes built before 1978 have lead-based paint, Mm -hmm. and before 1940, so if you have an older home, 87% of the houses have lead paint in them. Wow. And very toxic. So you don't want to be sanding this, and you don't want to use a a heat gun over 1,100 degrees. Isn't that interesting? That'll vaporize the lead Mm -hmm. if you use a... So you can use a, a very low heat on a heat gun. It does a nice job removing paint. But if you don't know, especially if so you... So you have a piece of furniture, right? Right. And you're using a heat gun? Yeah. Or yeah, a my, torch? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Use a paint stripper, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. And what's cool about paint stripper, too, is you know, if talking about lead, or if you don't know, you get an antique, that paint stripper is just going to encapsulate all the old paint, making it very safe to remove. Hmm. So you're not pushing this lead up into the air. One of the strongest and fastest paint removers you can get is dichloromethane, and you'll see this on the label, or it's also going to be... Are you going to spell it? <laughs> At the end, if we need to stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's called methylene chloride, and sometimes it'll be abbreviated to MC. Methylene chloride is very good at removing layers of paint very quickly. And so one of the top-rated companies is Jasco, and that's J-A-S-C-O. You'll see these in in most hardware stores, and this is what we always carried for Mm -hmm. years. This is all you would see is this type of product. And they have a premium paint and epoxy remover. This is going to remove all types of paint, whether it's latex or oil, varnish, lacquer, shellac. It removes epoxies, which are very strong, very hard to remove, and urethanes. You can use this on wood, metal, concrete, and masonry, but you have to be very careful when using methylene chloride because it can cause burns, blindness, if you get it in your eyes. Wow. The fumes are very dangerous. You really should be working outside when you're using these products. Well, even if you're just standing in the aisle with the paint thinners it's and wild, solvents, isn't it? it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, you go into one of the stores and mm-hmm. <laughs> walk down that aisle. If you're working inside, they say you need to have a very well-ventilated area. It should have the same air exchange as if you're outside. Most of the new regulations are saying use a respirator to protect your lungs against the fumes because they are toxic. You want to wear chemical-resistant gloves. And one trick I would use is to cuff up the top of your glove. So if you're holding, let's say, a piece of furniture and you're painting this on so that these chemicals don't oh. run down your glove and onto your skin, if you just cuff it, that helps protect you. You always want to wear chemically resistant gloves. Right. You don't want to just get the typical gloves because this chemical will melt <laughs> just <laughs> typical gloves. And then you want chemical splash goggles. Again, look at the label because, you know, the pla- this will dissolve some plastics. Wow. You want to shake this well, and then you want to use this in a metal can. So like a coffee can, you want to pour it into that. And and also one trick with these, because, you know, we always carry, most of these are are in metal cans, small metal cans. Sometimes they rust. Yeah. And, you know, customers have taken this home and just couldn't get it open. So one tip is you can put a little piece of cloth over the cap and then use like a locking pliers grab onto that and then you can twist it off and if there's any splashing because you're squeezing this right. can while you're doing it that cloth is going to protect you hmm. so that's just a, another little tip you don't want to use you know plastic cups uh, again you're putting it into a coffee can and then use these real cheap throwaway paint brushes if you're using the liquids you want to brush in one direction only and many of these paint removers and other chemicals related to this methylene chloride, they evaporate very quickly. So what they do is they add wax to mm-hmm. the paint remover, 
and when you you shake it real well you mix this wax up with it and when you lay it out and you want to put a thick coating of this on whatever surface you're trying to remove the paint it forms a thin layer of this wax on top of the chemical and that holds in the chemical it keeps it from evaporating right. quickly which was why you know we have asked this question for years mm -hmm. why do the instructions always say brush it and nobody like like at the uh, hardware shows nobody ever seemed to know yeah, I mean, it took me a long time to find this answer. Yeah, fascinating. And it so, was like one guy knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's, so they so this wax if you so if you brush it back and forth so you're laying out your your remover mm -hmm. and if you're brushing it back and forth you break up that waxy film right and now this evaporates quickly and it's not going to do its job mm -hmm. so very interesting with products like this because it has this waxy residue as we're removing the paint. With the methylene chloride, we're going to rinse it with mineral spirits or a paint thinner. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you're always reading the label because every manufacturer has a little different mix and some recommend different solvents. Some of these can also be flammable. Some aren't. Hmm. Most companies recommend that you put on a paint remover in that 65 to 80, 85 degree range. If it's too hot and this dries out, it doesn't do its job. Then you've got to scrape it all off and start again. If it's too cool, it doesn't do its job either. Wow. Interesting, huh? With projects, let's say you have a lot of vertical surfaces, the best type of paint remover is a gel. Mm -hmm. And then also, they, they're doing a really nice job with the sprays. So they have aerosols now. Oh, really? And really nice for intricate woodwork hmm. where you're getting into cracks and crevices. For chairs and tables, what you can use is a metal can or something under the legs to catch the remover. So as you're brushing it on mm -hmm. in one direction, <laughs> as it drips, then it's going to be caught in, in that can. Oh, well, that's smart. Yeah. Instead of, like, killing your grass. <laughs> right, exactly. Or, or even if you're putting down drop claws, which right. you should always put down drop claws. You're not getting these piles of paint remover. Mm -hmm. And then with that, you'd want to use, uh, you know, heavy-duty plastic drop claws. You don't want the thin ones. I would have newspaper and cardboard boxes available so that you can scrape off the paint right. and this into that. And most of this, what you want to do is you want to let this evaporate before you throw it into the waste. So it's nice if you're scraping this into newspaper where you can kind of lay out and let it evaporate and get hard mm -hmm. before you throw it into the trash. And with the methylene chlorides, it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to break down the paint. Now, once the paint is soft and it's bubbling up, you want to use a scraper on any large flat areas. And what kind a, of scraper? I would use just a cheapy dollar plastic scraper, especially on wood, because you don't want to damage the wood. So like a putty knife? Yes, like a putty knife. Just a, a, And you can get them you know, from an inch to you know, three inches wide. And just the cheapy throw. It's good that we always use the correct terms, isn't it? <laughs> well, we are professionals. <laughs> <laughs> and pick up a couple. They're cheap. For hard to reach area, and you don't want to, you know, use a scraper and, and you want to scrub, scoop all of this off because right. you don't want to. I've seen some guys try to use a cloth and you just make a mess. And especially you, you bind up that wax and the remover. And you're kind of like rubbing it in. Though, yeah, it's you? terrible. Yeah, definitely use a scraper. And then for hard to reach areas, you can use a toothbrush, a real fine steel wool, or these plastic scouring pads, mm -hmm. and they do a nice job. Once you get off all the soft paint, then you're going to want to use mineral spirits or whatever solvent they recommend to wipe everything down. If you have any paint remaining, then you're going to apply another coat of the stripper and just keep working this till it's all removed, hmm. and then you're wiping it down with mineral spirits. You know what's interesting about mineral spirits? No, what? It was, de it was developed in 1928 by W.J. Stoddard as an alternative solvent for his dry cleaning business. Hmm. So sometimes you'll see it referred to as Stoddard solvent, and it's just mineral spirits. Never heard of that. <laughs> So when you're done with all of this, you're going to want to dispose of all of this waste according to your local regulations. In most states, uh, paint remover is considered a hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. Most communities are going to allow you to just uh, let everything evaporate, get hard, and then put it into your regular waste. But it's not bad to call your local village and just see how they want you to dispose of it. You know what I also found out? They say don't wear leather shoes if you're using methylene chloride. Because if you drip it onto it, it's absorbed into the leather and it can't be cleaned out. 
Yeah, I would say if you're doing any kind of projects like this, don't wear leather shoes. Use galoshes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, a step down from the methyl chlorides is something called n dash methyl pyrrolidone, and they usually uh, abbreviate it to NMP. Why? Because <laughs> what you'd have to ask why. <laughs> so one one very popular one is citrus strip, and this is C I T R I S T R I P, and this is a blend of this methyl pyrrolidone and citrus turpins. So these are the solvents that are in citrus rinds, but they just don't have enough power to do it on their own. So like we talked about in some of the cleaners, now they're using these citrus solvents. Right. And they're just non-toxic. They do a really nice job. But with these paint removers, they've got to add kind of these harsher chemicals to it. Right. So it's definitely less harsh than the methyl chlorides, but you still need to make sure that you're wearing uh, protective goggles and chemical gloves because even though they say less toxic or they say safer, right. they're st- you, st- you still want to protect yourself. Hmm, interesting. And these are, are very good for vertical surfaces. Most of these come in a gel like the citrus strip. I, I saw very good ratings for its gel because it locks on to vertical surfaces. Mm-hmm. What's wild about this is because they're more mild, they need a minimum of 30 minutes, and many of these say leave it on for as much as 20 hours, wow. depending on the type of paint or varnish that you're removing, and also how many layers that you're trying to get off. But like the citrus strip, this is going to work 20 on... 20 hours? 20 hours. Yeah, yeah. amazing, huh? Yeah. So, so you normally don't hear 20 hours. I mean, why not just say 24 hours? 20 is nice and even. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? So this will work on latex and oil paints, varnish, polyurethane, shellac, epoxies. So a very good product. Uh, you can use this on wood, metal, masonry, but you've got to be patient. Yeah. And then with this, you're going to use mineral spirits also to rinse the residue. With these types of removers, you want to work in a small area, kind of a test area, and start to scrape it to see if the paint's releasing. Mm-hmm. If not, you're just going to let it set for that 20 hours. 20 hours. And then Ready Strip Pro is another one rated very high. It comes with this NMP. And a few of these reviews said it worked great, but it worked best if you leave it between six and eight hours on the product. Hmm. For really large areas, like a front porch, if you have columns or you know sections that you're trying to move large amounts of paint, mm-hmm. they've got an interesting product from Dumond. It's called Peel Away. And this is really unique because they... They give you this laminated paper that comes with their kits. So you put on their paint remover and you put this laminated paper over it Mm -hmm. and then it it keeps it from evaporating, you know, and then it also bonds with all this. And so as you start to scrape, everything comes off in one big piece Hmm. and they're able to wrap it away. So they say that this is just excellent. Or you're able to peel it away. Peel it away, exactly. (laughs) And then wrap it up. But great for like areas where you think that there might be lead paint because it encapsulates all of it. Hmm. And then you can rinse the surface with water and then they have their citralize. It's a special neutralizer that works with their product. They also have another highly rated product called Smart Strip. This is water-based. It doesn't use the laminated paper or a neutralizer, and it can be rinsed with water. Hmm. And what's interesting is when you're looking, like let's say you're working on uh, you know delicate wood antiques and you're removing paint, a lot of these refinishers said not to use the products that you rinse with water because it pulls up the Napa wood. They prefer a product where you would rinse it with a solvent like paint thinner. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And then 3M, they have something called Safest Stripper, and this was rated very high for being a mild stripper. It can be rinsed with water. It works in between 2 and 20 hours, again, Cindy, (laughs) depending on the paint or the finish that you're removing. Another less aggressive paint remover is called Soy Gel, and this is made from soybeans. No way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but not just soybeans. It has the NMP in there, too. You so, mean you can't just take some soybeans and No, it's it weird. Yeah, you grind it into your paint. And <laughs> <laughs> so this, they want you to put this in, in a very thick coat so it doesn't dry out. Again, with all of these where, you know, they're kind of making it look a lot friendlier, mm-hmm. you know, it's you still need to make sure you're protecting yourself. So even if it says, you know, hey, we use oranges in this or soybeans, right. mm-hmm. you know, there's other chemicals in there helping it do its work. Much better than the, you know, the very harsh chemicals 
totally harsh. But but you need these to... are less harsh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a nice reference for paint strippers. Yes. It, what? What? What is it? The California thing that I printed for the you. The California Department of Public Health. Mm-hmm. They put out a list of their preferred paint removers, and some of the top ones they listed. So this is the least harsh. So Crown Paint Strip next. High Speed Ready Strip. Matzenbacher's Lift Off Paint and Varnish Remover. <laughs> Please spell it. <laughs> yeah, that's a because you see this all kinds of hard. They have all kinds of products. Mm-hmm. It's M O T S E N B O C K E R apostrophe S. Mm, nice. You have Piranha Next Strip Pro, Safest Stripper Paint and Varnish Remover. That was at 3M we talked about. Smart Smart Strip by Dumont Chemical, and then Zip Strip Premium Green paint and finish remover those were considered the preferred products for this from the state of california one thing that you should be aware of when you're working with paint thinner or mineral spirits you for mean paint solvents pa- solvents yes yes that we were supposed to do this episode on <laughs> i kind of went down the paint remover <laughs> tangent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it kind of became less about the solvents yeah. and more about the paint removers <laughs> <laughs> until that was all that was left <laughs> What's interesting, though, is on the products where you're using these solvents, you need to be careful because they are toxic and flammable. Mm -hmm. And paint thinner is mineral spirits. Mineral spirits is more refined and has less smell, so a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. And then the paint thinner is less expensive. Right. So, you know, it's just cheap to grab a, a gallon of that. But you need to be careful. The experts are now saying that after research, they're suggesting using respirators whenever you're working with paint thinner or mineral spirits. Mm-hmm. Always wear goggles because if it's splashed into the eyes, it can really do damage. So you want to rinse with running water for at least 10 to 15 minutes and then get medical attention right away. And just be conscious that these things are toxic and flammable. One of the stories that were on one of the boards I was reading, two workers were using paint thinner to clean this sticky resin off of a floor. Mm -hmm. So they saturated this floor with mineral spirits so that it would soften, Mm -hmm. and they decided to take a lunch break. They got back, and they were using a metal scraper, which caused a spark. It ignited the floor, and it killed both of them. Wow. So, you you know, a lot of the stuff... you know, you, you just don't hear some of these horror stories. And, you know, sometimes you get a little complacent with some of these products. Do you have anything else to add? I would start with the least caustic and move up to stronger products, depending on what you're removing. Mm-hmm. Some of these really old paints, especially if you're working with an antique, they might have such a hard surface that you might need to go after it with a little steel wool or sandpaper first. Well, so some if, of them, too. You don't know how many layers of paint are yeah. You can have 10, 15, 20 layers. 35, 40. And then you have to leave it on for 20 (laughs) hours, your paint stripper. I would always wear chemical-resistant gloves and goggles. Mm -hmm. Work outside if possible. And my mom was an antique dealer, so she she was a singer and played piano. Mm -hmm. And then part-time she was collecting these antiques for years before she started doing professionally. And I remember growing up, so we lived in this apartment, and we had detached garages. And in our section of the garage there my parents never had the car in there it was either my all my dad's drum equipment or my my mom's antiques and Mm -hmm. so she would pull out these you know all these different rocking chairs and all this she loved chairs she had Mm -hmm. a thing with chairs for some reason she has a thing with a lot of weird stuff (laughs) yeah so she would lay out all these uh, plastic drop claws and go after them. And it was fascinating as a kid to right. see the stuff that just looked like garbage mm-hmm. to me. And she would strip away this paint and just turn into... Be- in fact, she still has a few in her condo, that, like this beautiful rocking chair that was just white, old white chip paint. Mm-hmm. And now it's just this beautiful piece of furniture. So there's some real treasures under there. But sometimes because of this old paint... You have to kind of scratch it up first so that the chemicals can get in there and do its job. We well, definitely read the labels before you yeah, use any of these absolutely. products. Yeah, they're all so different. I would say keep the stripper wet. Don't let it dry out. Get newspaper, cardboard boxes so that you can scrape it into. Use heavy plastic drop cloths for everything that you're scraping into it or whatever you're setting on. Right. Most of the experts recommend a 6 millimeter plastic it can be a mess, so yeah, yeah. you don't want that melting. Uh, I really like that California Department of Public Health website mm-hmm. because they're always updating their recommendations. 
For small projects or intricate woodwork, I would say these new sprays do a really nice job because it gets into all these little recesses. Mm -hmm. They recommend that you put this on at least an eighth of an inch thick when you're using the spray. And then for projects, if you have something like a door, I would get it on a sawhorse. I'd cover the sawhorses with plastic. Mm -hmm. Make sure you take off all the hardware. You're going to work on one side, get it done before you flip it over and then trying to do the whole thing and have a mess. And then let all of this removed paint and strippers evaporate before you get it ready for the garbage. I would call your local village and see what their code is. Mm -hmm. Most of this is considered hazardous waste. So sometimes in a community, you're going to have to wait until they have their hazardous waste collection. Mm -hmm. Or you can always uh, go online and earth911.com. Right. So that's E-A-R-T-H, and the number's 911. Mm -hmm. dot com put your zip code in and they'll give the closest recycling place i think you forgot the most important thing was our home improvement book on amazon well that's important but to, when you're using these brush it on in one direction yes because of the wax <laughs> <laughs> let's wrap this up you can check out our home improvement book it's called home improvement solutions what every homeowner should know and it's just a very nice resource for your projects. It's on Amazon. Leave us a five-star rating and review if you enjoyed it. You can check out our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe. If you enjoyed it's, it. It's not really what I say, is it? No, no. It's, it's, uh, I'm thrown off by the Home Improvement Solutions <laughs> book. Hey, you just want me to do this all myself. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Nice. You're not going to do my part? No. Ugh. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. Yeah. You could check out our home improvement videos on YouTube at yeah. Fixit Home Improvement, and you could subscribe there as well. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. What's your Twitter handle? Fixit Co host on Twitter or Fixit Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> fix it. See, it's not that easy, is it? Well, we never talk about Twitter. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Think, think anyone's listening. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Talk to you next week. No, wait. no, I like that line. Talk to you next week. Yeah.